Hi, my name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at Adobe Spark, and more specifically, how we can tell our stories and publish them to the web using Spark Page. As I swipe through this Spark page that I created to showcase my photography on a recent trip, we can see that I was able to put together a very elegant and professional looking story, and I was able to do it quickly because Spark Page's learning curve is very small. We can see that I can include individual as well as groups of photos, text with different formatting, as well as video and links to additional content. Because it's template driven, Page can help me as a photographer make better design decisions. Plus, they look great regardless of the device that they're viewed on, and I don't have to worry about hosting the content. I can use the link or embed code when I want to share my page across social media. So let's see how easy it is to make a Spark page. We can create it on my iPad, iPhone, or within a browser. So now I'm here in my browser at spark.adobe.com, and I've signed in with my Adobe ID. Now your screen might look a little bit different depending on if you're over in the inspiration gallery or if you were back where I was in my projects area. I'll go ahead and click on the plus icon here and I'm going to create a Spark page. The first thing that I might want to consider is selecting a theme in the upper right. You can see I can scroll through a number of different themes that really communicate a different message based on the story you want to tell. So if I wanted something a little bit more whimsical, I could select Whimsy. In this case, I'll select Crisp, and then I need to add a title. So I'll click in the title area and start typing, and then I can add a subtitle. As you can see, it's automatically making that subtitle in all caps. I'm going to click on the plus icon and then choose Photo in order to add a photo for the cover of my Spark page. You can see there's a variety of different options from where I can get my photos, including any photos that are synchronized with Lightroom or Creative Cloud. Since I have these photos locally on this machine, I can also use Upload Photo and then navigate to the photo that I want to use. I'll click Choose, and that becomes my first image. Of course, all of these images can be changed at any time, but let's go ahead and scroll to start writing our story. I'll click on the plus icon, and we can see I can add additional photos, text, a link, video, a photo grid, or a glide show. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of text. In this case, I want to add the date, February 21st, 2016. Then in order to format that, I'll simply select it and choose Head 1. I think that's a little bit too big, so let's choose Head 2. Then if I want to add more text, I'll click on the plus icon because I want to format this differently. I'll click on the T for text, and then we'll start my story. One of the great features if you're creating your Spark page on an iPad is you can actually use the dictation option that's available. For now, let's just type this in, and then we'll add a photograph. I'll click the plus icon, and then choose Photo. Again, we can navigate and upload a photo. I'll select a different one this time, select Choose, and now, because I've added this photograph and it's not the title photograph, Spark Page is going to ask me if I want that photograph to be in line or if I want to fill the screen, in which case I can add a caption, put it inside a window so that when I scroll up and down it slowly reveals itself, or I can put it full width. I can even rearrange them after the fact using the Move option, and there's a Focal Point option as well. Let's go ahead and make this one fill the screen, and then I'll use the focal point option to drag the focal point because you can see that as I change the orientation of a device, say like an iPad, from landscape to portrait, Spark Page is showing me a preview of what it'll look like in the other orientation. All right, I'll click Save and then scroll down a little bit more. And this time I want to add a number of photos together, so I'll choose Photo Grid. I click in order to add the photos to build my grid. I'll select a number of images and click Choose, and we can see that Spark Page automatically arranges them in a grid for me. If I want to rearrange or swap any of these images, I can use the arrow buttons to move them backwards and forwards. If I don't want one of the photographs in the grid, I could select it and then choose to delete it, and I can also make it a larger photo if I want to put preference on one image over another. 
When I'm finished with the grid, I'll click Save. Of course, everything's re-editable, so if I ever wanted to change the photos in here, I could click and edit the grid or delete it. But for now, let's scroll down. I'll click the plus. If I want to add a video, that's as easy as clicking on the video option and then pasting in a link from either YouTube or Vimeo and saving that out. I'll click the plus again here in order to add a link. And here I'll type in, for more information, visit my blog as a call to action. And then underneath that, we'll put the address blogs.adobe dot com slash jcost. I'll go ahead and center that and then click save. And you can see that it's created that button. If I decided at this point that I didn't like the theme, meaning that maybe I didn't like the typeface and the design, I could go back to the themes option and select a different theme. We can see that the overlay on the cover page has been updated and there are additional changes made to the typefaces and font sizes throughout the entire Spark page. If I want to change it back, it's as simple as going back to themes and then selecting a different theme. Before I share my page, I might want to preview it, so I'll click on the preview icon. And then we can scroll down through to make sure that everything looks good. And when I'm ready to publish this, I can simply click share where I'll get a shareable link or I could get an embed code. I can also go in and edit details such as the title, author, and additional options like photo credits. A Spark page can be updated at any time and republished using the same URL. So there you have it, a quick overview of all of the features in Spark page. I'm sure you can see how easy it is to create your own and share your story with the world. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.